we've all seen the lavishly illustrated brain maps where you know one little region is labeled as this is where your brain does metaphors and another little region is um, multiplication or arithmetic and more importantly this is the language region this is the part of the motor cortex that works my right hand this is the part of the motor cortex that works my left hand this is the part of the, somat of the somatosensory cortex that allows me to feel on the right side of my body etc and I think uh, when we look at those images, they look, I mean, they're written in indelible ink. That had been what neuroscience had believed for more than a century. These patterns are set up, presumably by genetics, and that's the way they're going to stay. The revolution in neuroplasticity has shown that that's not the case. In fact, which regions of the brain handle which functions, how large pr these particular specialized regions are, can change in response to two forces. One is the life you lead, the experiences you have, physical as well as emotional or mental. Um, but they can also change, and those are signals from the outside world, um, which we can talk about more. They, it has to do with everything from stroke rehab to uh, Tourette's and other things. Um, but the other way the brain can change in structure and function is in response to purely mental activity. Um, the shorthand way of describing this, and it's not an exaggeration, is that you can think yourself into a different brain. And I would say, you know, again, to the psychotherapists in your audience, they would say, well, duh, of course we knew that, that's what we do. Um, and psychologists as well. Um, but there's something about, you know, going back to the allure of, the, uh, of neuroimaging, Neuroimaging has shown these changes. A region that had been responsible for one function is now responsible for a different one. It's gotten larger in response to the demands that the person puts on, etc. So that's neuroplasticity.